Now let's talk about Application Gateway and how it can it be really helpful when it works together with API management. Assume you have a scenario where you have set of internal APIs that are restricted for internal use. At the same time, you have set of external APIs that you want to share with external customers. Of course, it's going to be really difficult to build, maintain, and also very expensive if you are going to have two API managements, one for the internal APIs and one for the external APIs. And what Microsoft recommends in here is to have only one API management and hosted an internal VNet. And then we are going to have our internal APIs and external APIs hosted in this API management. And we already know from the previous lectures, as soon as we put our API management in an internal VNet, our API management will not be publicly accessible anymore to the external customers. And it will only be accessible to the internal customers that are connected to the internal VNet. So the internal customers or internal systems will be able to access the internal APIs that are hosted in the internal VNet. But the external customers will not be able to reach the external APIs at the moment. This is why we need to bring in the application gateway and put it in between. So the application gateway here will work as WAF or Web Application Firewall and it's going to use URL based routing to direct external customers traffic to the external APIs that are hosted in an internal VNet. At the same time, it's going to block any external traffic that will be directed to the internal APIs because they should be protected from external traffic. Now let's go ahead and see how can we provision application gateway to make this architecture work. Now let's go to our Azure portal. And let's open our API management instance. Scrolling all the way down to custom domains and let's add a new one. Selecting gateway type and let's put api.mycompany.com in the host name. However, it's important to mention from the get-go that this scenario will not work because I don't have a DNS record for mycompany.com. However, I am going to show you all the steps that you have to do in the API management and in the application gateway and also will guide you how to create a self-signed certificate in the key vault. And what you will have to do is to create a CNAME record to direct the traffic from the API management to your application gateway. Now. Let's go ahead and open Key Vault. And let's go ahead and add a new Key Vault. Let's put it in our Dev Resource Group and let's call it My Company API Key Vault. And let's put it in Australia East Region and leave everything else to the default values. And let's go straight to create our key vault and let's go ahead and create it. Now let's go to our key vault and let's go to certificates and let's generate a new certificate. Let's call it gateway certificate. And let's select self-signed certificate and let's put in the subject here api.mycompany Dot com. And let's go ahead and create this certificate. Now let's go back to our API management and select this certificate from our key vault. Let's select our key vault and let's select the gateway certificate. And now let's go ahead and add this custom domain. And as you can see here, API management doesn't have an access to the key vault and let's go ahead and click yes to provide the application gateway the API management with the proper access to the key vault and now let's go ahead and save our changes and it's going to take few minutes for the changes to be applied so I'm going to pause my recording until it's finished now as you can see our custom domain name has been created now let's go ahead to the application gateways
and let's add a new one. Let's put it in dev resource group and let's call it application gateway, put it in Australia East region and select that here to be WAF version 2. WAF stands for Web Application Firewall, Auto Scaling Off and let's put it in our internal VNet. And as you can see here, the application gateway has to be in a subnet by itself. So let's go ahead and do this. And let's add a new subnet and let's call it application gateway subnet. Now let's go back to the application gateway and let's refresh this page. And again, we are going to put it in dev resource group. We are going to call it application gateway, Australia East, WAF version two, auto scaling off. And we are going to put it in our internal VNet and in the application gateway subnet that we have just created. Now let's go to next steps. Here we need to specify a public IP address or a private IP address for our application gateway. So let's go ahead and create a new one Let's call it application gateway IP. And let's go to the next step. Now we need to add two backend pools. One backend pool that's going to be directed to our API management. And the other pool that's going to be terminate the traffic and doesn't redirect the traffic anywhere else. So the first pool, it's going to call it API. And in here, I'm going to put the private IP address of my API management. And let's go ahead and add this. And then let's add another pool. Let's call it sync pool. And we are not going to assign any target with this pool. Let's go ahead and add this and let's go to the next step. Here we need to define the routing rules for our application gateway. So let's go ahead and define rule one and let's call this listener one. However, you should use a proper names for your listener and rules because you will not be able to change them once you create your listener and rules. And front end IP, let's select public, HTTP, port 80, leave everything to the default values. However, in production, you should consider using HTTPS and a certifications. Now let's go to the back end targets and let's select API and for HTTP settings, let's go ahead and create new settings. Let's call it HTTP settings or one HTTP all default values. And then let's go ahead and add this. And again, in production, you should consider using HTTPS in this settings. Let's go ahead and add this. Now let's add a path based routing here. So for the internal routes in the URL, it's going to be targeted to the sync pool, internal target. And here we are going to use HTTP settings one, and it's going to be directed to the sync pool, which is not going to pass this request anywhere. However, if we have an external in the URL, then we are going to pass this one external target. Then we are going to pass this request using HTTP settings one to the API backend target. Let's go ahead and add this one and then let's add this rule. Now let's go to the next step and let's go ahead and create our application gateway. And again, it might take few minutes for the application gateway to be ready. So I'm going to pause my recording until it's done. Now the application gateway is ready for me. So let's go to application gateways and app gateway. And as you may notice here, we have got a notification that says one or more of the backend pools are not healthy. And the reason for this is that we need to create a specific props for the API management. So let's go ahead and add one. Let's call it API management health check. Let's make it HTTP. And for the host name, let's go ahead and copy the gateway host name. And for the path here, we need to get back to the documentation and add a specific path to be able to get the health check of the API management. So let's scroll all the way down here 
and we need to have this path in the health check for the API management to be able to return a proper response. Now let's check the HTTP settings and let's go ahead and test this health prop before we add it. As you can see here, it succeeded. So let's add this health prop. And now let's go and check the backend health. And as you can see, it's healthy. And now let's go to connection troubleshoot. Now let's specify our IP manually and let's put the private IP address of our API management 10.1.1.7 and let's specify port 80 and let's check the connection. And as you can see here, it's been succeeded and the first hop has been to the application gateway and then destination to the API management. And as I said before, I will not be able to demonstrate this scenario for you because I don't have a custom domain name for my API management. However, in the production, you should consider using HTTPS along with an SSL certificates to secure the connections between the client and the application gateway and between the application gateway and the API management. Now let's go ahead and clean this up. Let's go to overview and delete the application gateway. And then let's go to the key vault and delete our key vault as well. However, we should go to the API management and delete the custom uh, gateway that we have created before because it uses this key vault. Let's go ahead and delete this one and then let's save our changes. Now let's go and delete our key vault. Let's go ahead and delete it. Then let's get back to the API management and turn off the virtual network that we have created before. So we will be able to use the API management as we used to. And let's go ahead and save our changes. It's going to take some time, like 30 minutes or so. Now we have everything cleaned up. Now let's go to all resources. We have one more thing we need to do manually scroll down to the public IP address that we have created. It doesn't delete automatically when we delete the application gateway. So we have to delete it manually in here. So let's go ahead and delete it as well. And then let's go ahead and delete the virtual machine that we have created API VM and its public IP address network security group and anything might be associated to it. So let's go ahead and delete this as well. That's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and please feel free to join me in the next lecture.